Welcome to Basketball Cinema, where we revisit the most important and iconic games in NBA history. My name's Jay, and today we're looking at a 2001 regular season game between the Orlando Magic and Philadelphia 76ers. The 2001 season and the era in which it's a part of is truly one of my favorites to return to, as I find myself- Wait, hold on, nope. I'm already stopping myself. It's such a cliche. I always use it calling a certain era one of my favorites. Like I could literally say that about any point in the history of the NBA. I gotta stop with these cliches, man. Anyways, where was I? Going back to revisit the early 2000s is always a joy because so many of the superstars that were dominating the league as I began really watching basketball got their start during that era. I'm talking guys like Kobe Bryant, Dirk Nowitzki, Tim Duncan, Steve Nash, Tracy McGrady, Allen Iverson, the list is endless. All superstars beginning their ascent at the beginning of the millennium. Today we focus on the latter two names mentioned. Tracy McGrady and Allen Iverson. In 2001, the two men found themselves in similar situations in their respective careers. Both were relied upon to carry the entire offensive load for their team, playing big minutes, taking big shots, and scoring a ton. Both were surrounded by primarily unspectacular but tough-nosed supporting cast, and both were doing a reasonable job of powering their team. As the Magic were 38 and 32 on the season, the 76ers 48 and 22. I should also mention, uh, in case you didn't know, no, the NBA was a wildly different game back in 2001. Teams averaged just 94.8 points a game in 01, the third lowest total in modern NBA history. We saw the 10th slowest pace in league history. Teams were shooting only 14 threes a game, which is about a third of the total we see today. As well, the game was dominated by posts up and mid-range play. AI and TMAC finished first and seventh in the league in scoring respectively. And it was clearly never an easy night at the office. For Iverson and the 76ers, as highlighted by their Eastern Conference leading record, championship expectations were ruling the day in Philadelphia. Because of that, the team had acquired perennial Defensive Player of the Year candidate Dikembe Mutombo just one month prior in an attempt to insulate their diminutive star guard. For McGrady and the Magic, after losing Grant Hill to injury, a berth in the 2000 playoffs would have been absolute gravy. Tracy McGrady was in the midst of his superstar breakout season in 2001, while Allen Iverson was solidifying his status as arguably the greatest in the game. Ridley Scott didn't direct this one, but it still was a very satisfying duel. Here, I'll show you. The game began with, uh, yeah, th these were the starting lineups we were working with. Got some Mike Miller, some Bo Outlaw, but hey, young Doc Rivers coaching. Okay. Oh, for the 76ers, some George Lynch, Eric Snow. Okay, y'all get the point. This was about to be all about the stars. After tip, the first possession of the game resulted in a balletic step back jumper by Allen Iverson for his first two of the game. With an art house camera angle along the baseline, rookie Mike Miller connecting on a deep attempt for Orlando's first points. First look of the game for T Mac, an open midi, he missed it, and Iverson responded with his second make of the game. McGrady would first get on the board at the stripe. After working from the post and drawing a foul, he made them both. First field goal of the game for our guy though, he ran the baseline coming off some back screens, splashing with his picturesque shot stroke. I wanted to make this video primarily to have a chance to watch early prime Tracy McGrady at work. We last saw T-Mac here on the channel during the 2001 All-Star Game, and before that with his epic 13 points and 33 seconds moment with Houston. McGrady joined the Magic prior to the 2001 season, after spending the first three years of his career in Toronto. Don't worry, we'll discuss just how he ended up in Orlando in a few minutes. After averaging just over 15 a game in 2000 with the Raps, Tracy exploded in 2001. He'd averaged 26.8 points a game to go along with 7.5 rebounds and 4.5 assists. He made his first of seven straight All-Star games, was named All-NBA for the first of his seven times, finished sixth in MVP voting, and won Most Improved Player. In the title of this video, I suggested that Tracy McGrady is a forgotten superstar. While I think most fans respect him as a Hall of Famer, a two-time scoring champ, listening to Kobe Bryant talk about his game and abilities does lead me to believe we generally underrate the man. I mean, he had no weaknesses, offensively or defensively and uh, he was a nightmare to guard. Kobe always spoke glowingly about McGrady, and I had a chuckle when I realized he basically always used the same line when he sung his praise. Cause he, man listen, he could do everything I could do, but he was tall. I think I told him one time, I said, bro, you could do everything I could do on the court, 
but you were 6'10". <laughs> he, he had all the skills and all the athleticism, um, but he was 6'9". Kobe may not have ever figured out T-Mac's true height, but we'll forgive him. Speaking of running off screens, that's what Allen Iverson did to perfection. Done. Iverson, that's for a three. All cotton for Allen Iverson. The man wearing number three in white started the game three for three. Early foul trouble for rim protector extraordinaire Dikembe Mutombo. He played just five minutes in the first half. AI back to work doing what he did best, darting past his perimeter defender, getting hit, he'd make his first trip to the stripe where he'd knock down both. We last saw Allen Iverson here on Basketball Cinema on this very 76ers squad as he battled Vince Carter in the 2001 playoffs. The 2001 season was Allen Iverson's crown jewel, the single season that truly defined what would be a Hall of Fame career. In this his fifth season in the NBA, AI would go on to lead the league in scoring at 31 points a game, his second of four scoring titles, steals with 2.5 per game, his first of three straight steals titles, as well he won MVP, All-Star Game MVP, and led the 76ers to a finals appearance. So all in all, uh, above average season for the answer. During the regular season, Allen dropped 51 points against Vince Carter and the Raptors, 49 against Ray Allen and the Bucks, 47 against T-Mac and the Magic a month prior, as well 40 against Kobe and the Lakers. He was like a lion in the wilderness, marking his territory against any threat to his throne as king of the NBA. And it wasn't just the raw numbers and skills that Iverson sported, which made him elite. Playing against him flat out sucked. Allen was that, that, he was like that white boy player in high school that played balls hard, like yeah. sweating on you playing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But he was the, the talent. You know, he was the, it was the talent, yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? White boy player in high school, but played balls hard, sweat all over his opponents, didn't have much talent? Yep. how did Gilbert Arenas get a hold of my high school game tape? What are we doing here? You'd rather guard, to be honest, you'd rather guard Kobe than Allen. Like, you know, I know, you know, Kobe got the ball every single time, but it didn't actually feel like it. Soon as he got the ball, he went to go try to score. If he didn't, he passed it, got it back, then tried to score. Yeah. He didn't like that, he got it, then tried to score. Yeah. It was like, God, like you. Yeah. So you're sitting here like, yeah. sub. For the second time already in this game, Tracy McGrady running off some baseline screens, another super clean look from the mid range, which he converted. I can't get enough of this camera work by Comcast Philadelphia. I mean, watch this tracking shot. Following Iverson making his way up court as if he were Henry Hill at the Copacabana, capturing his every move as he dished to George Lynch for the jumper? Yo, who hired Marty Scorsese and Michael Ballhouse to shoot this game? Iverson was truly built different. At just six feet tall, he was taking hits like this all game, every game. Allen knocked down two flagrant freebies and a third after Doc was tagged with a tech. T-Mac finally putting the ball on the deck to make a play, floating into the paint for two. Another super silky shot from Tracy, one hard dribble into a pull up moving left. The Sixers would finish the first with a six point lead, 12 points for AI and 10 for T-Mac. A side plot to discuss as we watch this duel between Allen Iverson and Tracy McGrady is that they nearly became teammates just a couple years prior. No, seriously, it's not even one of those super wacky what ifs. It's a fact. Back in 1999, prior to the Toronto Raptors dealing T-Mac to the Magic, then 76ers GM Billy King confirmed that Philly had a deal in place to send Larry Hughes to the Raps in exchange for McGrady and a first round pick. Okay, first of all, that would have been a huge L for the Raps. But still better than what they eventually got for him. During the 2000 offseason, the Raps organization was basically just one big mess. I won't break it all down, but it led to a 21-year-old T-Mac deciding he didn't want to re-sign in Toronto. Along with Grant Hill, McGrady inked a massive sign and trade in Orlando. And while the Pistons got Ben Wallace as compensation for Hill, the Raps merely got a future first round pick. Ugh, gross. That was some all-time bad asset mismanagement. Anyways, back to the topic at hand. A super young Stephen A. Smith reported in his column at the time, saying the Raptors were contemplating making the McGrady and a first for Hughes deal. But after that report from Stephen A., the Raps consequently got cold feet about the deal and it fell through. Okay, so to summarize, the 76ers got a bit greedy in asking for a first round pick in addition to T-Mac. They probably shouldn't have pushed their luck. But also, Stephen A. Smith is the reason we didn't get to see Iverson and McGrady on the same team. What? And by the way- Me? Yes, you. You literally confirmed it yourself. 
we don't care. Let me tell, right, let me tell <laughs> to begin the second quarter, Tracy would move to five for eight from the field with yet another smooth mid-range make. Mac would exit the game shortly thereafter, and combined with Iverson taking a quick breather, well, we had a pretty ugly stretch in this game. It took four shot attempts for the 76ers to mercifully get a make here. Nice rebounding, Orlando. Let's jump forward just a bit, okay? Iverson checking back into the game, seven minutes left in the second quarter with his Sixers up seven. He took a risky hit on a jumper, made one of two from the free throw line. Allen was just getting into a rhythm here in the second. From AI, trying to bust up Armstrong, runs it up and in. Daryl, I saw your foot slip there, Daryl. Be careful out there, my guy. Another one for the future MVP after getting out in transition. Nice feed from George Lynch on the look ahead. McGrady back in the game himself, sauntering up the court and drawing a foul. He'd make a pair from the line. Iverson was often inefficient as a player, and understandably so given the era in which he played, but he was cooking at high efficiency here in the second quarter, a jab step mid-range from the deep left corner. On the following possession, he went to basically the exact same spot, this time connecting on a three from the corner. He'd shoot five of seven from the field in the second. Like Gilbert Arenas mentioned earlier, Iverson just kept coming. In semi-transition, he broke down Daryl Armstrong, floating another one home from the middle of the paint. T-Mac though, not trying to be overshadowed for long. No shot. McGrady slams it back with a left hand. Uh, yeah, uh, okay, that was pretty ridiculous. McGrady on the interior missed consecutive looks after grabbing his own board, but just moments later as the Magic regained possession, he finished with his unrivaled length in the paint. Matt Geiger of all people was randomly filling it up in this one. He had 9.7 rebounds in the first half. Congrats to Matt. The Magic with a late first half push, with Tracy getting his easiest look of the game under the rim for two. And with just two seconds remaining, a wild and one from Derek. Daryl Armstrong on the slice, Philly with a 7 point lead at the half, AI leading the way with 24 points, McGrady with 21 of his own. I brought his name up a bit earlier, but a glaring omission from this Magic roster in 2001 was Grant Hill. Talk about forgotten NBA legends man, Grant Hill pre-injuries was the man. After winning Rookie of the Year with Detroit in 1995, Hill would go on to make 5 straight All-NBA teams from 96 through 2000, averaging 22 points, 8 rebounds, and 7 assists per game. Sheesh. In August of 2000, as mentioned, Hill and McGrady signed matching seven-year contracts in Orlando. Unfortunately, Grant would play just four games during the 2001 season and a total of just 47 games in four seasons to begin his Magic tenure. As a result of those terrible ankle issues, the Grant and T-Mac tandem never bore fruit in the city beautiful, and Hill was never able to impart veteran wisdom on the younger McGrady. I think the problem was we just, it just was, I mean, I was hurt. I think it would have helped as an older player to sort of help show him a little bit, you know, how to do things. He was, he was 21 when he went to Orlando and just yeah. took off. Mm -hmm. So he was still young and the team wasn't that great. It wasn't just scoring that McGrady was effective at. Watch as he assessed the defense, patiently waiting for a lane to find his big man under the rim for a free two. The lone hoop of the quarter for Allen Iverson on the break as he slowed a bit here in the third. T-Mac didn't slow, however. A beautiful find on the break ahead to Bo Outlaw for the finish. After an AI turnover thanks to a timely double team, Tracy up to 23 points on the game with another gorgeous pull up from the left elbow. The Magic had altered their defensive strat against Iverson. You can see here as soon as he touched the ball, the nearest help defender showed double. Teams knew AI was the only killer on the floor, yet so often he still killed them. Crazy. McGrady again operating on the interior, this time coming up short on a finger roll, but he recovered the miss immediately and put it back over Matumbo. An Allen Iverson free throw gave him 27 points on the game and the 76ers a three point lead, but this is where things turn. Daryl Armstrong off the inbounds with a midi, T Mac on the dime. Mike Miller would go on to win Rookie of the Year in 2001. Miller for a three, and there it is. And that was a big reason why. Magic taking the lead for the first time in an eternity. More double teaming of Iverson who was forced into an ugly turnover. 76ers had the smaller Eric Snow defending Tracy McGrady or, well, not defending him really, as he easily turned out of the post for a simple late. Remember what Kobe said about T-Mac being super tall? That was apparent in this game. Up four in the third, Tracy McGrady kept his foot on the gas. Of course, Buford, a slightly better matchup here, trying to deal with McGrady, who has his way anyway. He was just too silky, too smooth, and too darn big. Kobe knew, man. Mike Doliak making a jumper from 15 feet out. Another dime from T-Mac. 
Another patented mid-range J from McGrady, Silke. Mike Miller on the break with a free dunk, and Bo Outlaw tipping in a weird layup just before the shot clock buzzer, Orlando had turned the tables completely. An 11 point lead heading into the fourth, led by an efficient 32 from the man known as the Big Sleep. And yes, the Big Sleep is another basketball reference gem, but this time I've edited it. Apparently T-Mac had this well-known problem that he slept a lot anytime, anywhere, he'd just fall asleep. Well, I guess this nickname checks out. The 76ers needed a quick start in the fourth, and they got it. In case you were curious, the recording of this game was indeed finished, and Allen Iverson connected on a three. But McGrady was trying to put the nail in the coffin. His 14th field goal make of the game already? Yet another mid-range jump shot. Look Look at Iverson this time bolting away from the incoming double team. He'd miss near the rim and get tagged with a technical for arguing the no call. Where AI was frustrated, his counterpart in blue was concentrated. T-Mac on the turn and fade absolutely levitated. Well, I mean, not really, but it did rhyme. Fortunately, the 76ers got a boost as Jermaine Jones hit a big time three after the drive and kick from Iverson, back to an eight point game. AI doing typical AI things, cleanly picking off a lazy pass, setting up Snow who got hammered. After he made a pair, Philly was back within six. The 76ers kept getting stops as Bo Outlaw missed for Orlando. In response, Iverson. Matumbo rips it down, puts it back, and a foul! Mount Matumbo finally making an impact in this game. It was worth the wait for Philly. By the way, Dikembe has made his way into five different videos here on my channel, which is pretty nuts considering I've only made 35 videos. Good work, big guy. Orlando went away from the immediate double on Iverson strategy, but he still missed on this drive. Moments thereafter, Iverson has McGrady on a switch. Charity for three and he drops it. Yo, speaking of white boy hoopers, big shot from my guy Pat Garrity. T-Mac missed a wildly clean look from straight away, but Daryl Armstrong tracked down the O-board and launched from the corner connecting on a triple. Orlando simply wouldn't let up in the fourth, man. And McGrady. T-Mac with a dribble attack and float finish going right. Uh, remember that play. McGrady was up to 40 on the game, but not to be outdone, Iverson finally matched him with an and one of his own to bring the deficit back down to nine. Just over three minutes remaining now, Eric Snow back to the line where he made a pair. The 76ers defense would disrupt a pass moments later, and Allen Iverson in transition would navigate to his spot, putting home a short range jumper. Philly a chance to cut the lead further, but some dude named Don Reed blocked Iverson and affected another shot. He then got fouled and made a pair of free throws on the other end. Don Reed. Yep, yeah, I never heard of this man in my life. Not even ashamed to admit it. Eric Snow was playing huge for Philly, muscling into the paint for a soft touch basket. McGrady finally missed on a midi, and that led to a transition foul on the other end. Jermaine Jones would make one from the line. He'd miss the second, but watch freaking Allen Iverson flying in to keep the ball alive, resulting in Matumbo getting fouled. A pair made from Deke made it a two-point game, but... They search for McGrady. That's for two, and he got it! Everyone knew where that ball was going, yet they still couldn't stop it. Eric Snow already had eight points in the fourth. Here he barreled into the lane with about a minute remaining, taking the hit and getting back to the line. More like Eric's son, am I right? Because of how brightly he was shining in the clutch? Hey, whoa! Come on, that's not necessary. That was legitimately funny. It just was. Once again, everyone in the building knew the magic were going to McGrady. As he caught the ball, he was immediately double teamed and would turn the ball over. The 76ers too went to their star in the clutch and Allen Iverson dove to the paint, flipped up a shot through what seemed to be a lot of contact, but he missed and there was no call. The MVP though, well, he knew what to do. As back on defense, a truly remarkable flop by AI, drawing an offensive foul and getting Philly the ball back. <laughs> Look at that, what, what an amazing flop. Give that guy an Oscar. On the other end, it didn't take long for Iverson to strike. Here's Allen for the tie. Yeah! Pandemonium in Philadelphia, a huge make from Iverson. He'd eventually make the cold-blooded freebie as well. One point lead for the Sixers. Because they began that possession down though, Iverson neglected to drain the shot clock, leaving time for a potential magic game winner. 
Statistically, however, the 76ers had a top five defense in 2001, meaning they were in a pretty good spot to win this game. It's McGrady with a Sixer lead at one, working over Jones all the way. He got it with 2.7 to go. Oh man, what a special player. A tough make as Jermaine Jones stuck with T-Mac on the drive, and he was forced to arc his shot high off the glass as DPOY Dikembe rotated perfectly for the help. Iverson would miss a long-range heave at the buzzer. Tracy McGrady finished the game with 44 points, 9 rebounds, 6 assists, and a game winner in a true breakout performance. At this point in the video, I always transition to a time of briefly discussing the legacy of whatever the game we're covering, but darn it this time it just makes me upset to think about. T-Mac's career was great, there is absolutely no denying it. I mean the man is in the Basketball Hall of Fame, but if somebody told you at this point in 2001 that McGrady would never go on to have any true playoff success, or that he wouldn't finish his career at least like top 50 all time in points? You'd have thought that person was a flat out liar. But the disappointing truth is that during his prime magic years, with Grant Hill consistently sidelined by injury, T-Mac was never able to get past the first round of the playoffs, losing in three consecutive years. He'd win back-to-back -back scoring titles in 2003 and 2004, but the longevity we expected from his career never came to fruition. Tracy McGrady would go on to be traded to the Houston Rockets during the summer of 2004. Once again, he was set to be a piece in a super promising duo alongside Yao Ming, but this time it was T-Mac who was victimized by injury. In five full seasons with the Rockets, Tracy would have a clean bill of health just twice. And as he battled injury, he saw his personal numbers decline. T-Mac, Yao, and the Rockets would make the playoffs together just three times, but once again, they didn't advance past round one. At the end of the day, I once again need to point out that Tracy McGrady is a Hall of Famer. He's doing just fine. It's just very hard not to reflect on the tantalizing talent he possessed and what could have been for number one. For each game covered here on Basketball Cinema, I'll be giving out three awards, beginning with the Clint Hawkeye Barton Award for Most Underrated Performer. I don't care. Which goes to, uh, Pat Garrity, I guess? Listen, this Magic team was so buns around T-Mac. I mean, Daryl Armstrong and Mike Miller were the next two best options. Pat Garrity was the second man off the bench for Orlando, and he hit a pretty big three in the fourth quarter for them. I don't know, man. This game was just Iverson versus McGrady. Let's move on. The Rick Dalton <laughs> Award for most recognizable moment goes to Tracy McGrady's jump shot. We've seen a lot of dudes in the NBA with effective and silky jump shots, but I'm just going to overlay a montage of McGrady J's from this game. Man, his jumper was a true thing of beauty. Just absolutely delightful. And finally, the Mark Jackson, with all due respect, award for weirdest moment in this game goes to, uh, okay, this might be the most random one ever. So sometimes when I get the files of these games to watch through and write about, they have commercials in them. For whatever reason, this game featured commercials for like 9 million as seen on TV products. Yeah, we've got the forearm forklift lifting straps. That's a mouthful. There is no way those work. The Slim Clip, which is an alternative to a wallet. These crazy SOBs are putting it in a blender and driving over it? Why? The Save a Blade, which is just a pencil sharpener for your razor. Dude, just buy a new razor. The Dosho Gym. That guy looks like he's about to box Rocky in Russia. The Micro Touch Magic. Is he shaving his ear? Oh, okay, I'm out. <laughs> and that's it. The Orlando Magic beat the Philly 76ers 96-95 on March 28th, 2001. AI reigned supreme in the 2001 season, but Tracy McGrady was a superstar on the rise and there to stay. If you enjoyed this episode of the show, please consider dropping a like down below. And if you can see yourself watching a few more of these, please, please subscribe to the channel. Leave me a comment as well. All that good stuff. Make sure you follow me on Twitter as well, at jcanada10, and uh, you might get a tease for next week's episode. But until that one, my name's Jay, and this has been Basketball Cinema. Bro, those commercials still have me rolling. Like, it was every commercial break, a random as seen on TV pro People in the 2000s were crazy, man, because you know they used to buy those things. What a treat today. I got to break out my Orlando Magic Tracy McGrady jersey. I love this jersey. I think it is so sharp. I wish T-Mac had way more success in his career, but again, I'll say he was a Hall of Famer, a great player. It was super fun to watch him here in his prime. I hope you guys enjoyed too.